So if you remember in part one, I discussed this a little bit. This is the converter board that you would need, and in part one I discussed how to find the correct one, and I also talked a little bit, just briefly, about this wire that's coming out here, which leads up to the top there on those speakers that I have mounted. Uh, what you're seeing right here is actually a motherboard, a graphics card, SSD, power supply. Uh, that's going to be a little bit confusing. I'm going to pull this stuff out of here and we're going to simplify this and we're going to do a Raspberry Pi because I know that seems to be the common uh, thing that people like to use is Raspberry Pis instead of PCs and we're just doing stuff for uh, dummies and cheapskates so I'm not going to get into using a PC inside of a cabinet. Uh, I'm going to talk about using a Raspberry Pi and kind of simplifying all this for you. So let me cut this here. I'm going to get my screwdriver out and I'm going to pull out all this junk. And we're going to start fresh and see if we can simplify this for everybody. So what I like to use to mount these down with are PCB feet. These you can get off of Amazon for a couple bucks. Come like in a bag of 50, bag of 100. Uh, if we look up here on this little controller right here you can see these PCB feet in action you can see how I have it screwed into the wood there and it's also screwed in right here here's that screw on that one and on that one you can see how they're screwed into the PCB and they give you a nice little gap there look at that that gap so big that I can even get my finger through there and move it so that is definitely not touching anything it's gonna be the same thing on this one uh, on the back here, you can see I've already put a couple PCB feet on the bottom portion. I guess you would call that the bottom since it's going this way. And they're not going to get screwed into anything. Now, on your Arcade 1UP monitor in the back, you're going to see these little screw holes. Here's one. There, There's one. Here's one. They're, they're scattered all over. Basically, all you want to do is just kind of find some. They're going to gap out right now. You can actually adjust these. See how I can turn this after I have them screwed in and you're just going to turn them line them up with the holes there on the converter board and screw those down now I'm only going to screw down two of them the other two uh, there's really no place to screw but it's no big deal because we're still going to have that gap uh, this is probably the easiest way to do it some people will tell you oh just get a piece of wood and get a piece of cardboard maybe get a some of that uh, you know gorilla tape or something double-sided tape and and that's fine too if you want to do that but myself I prefer kind of a cleaner look so I like to go with the PCB feet and that and I know for sure nothing's gonna come in contact there and it just looks good so let me go ahead and mount this uh, properly in here now if you have a uh, horizontal monitor this is of course is a vertical so it's longer that way if you have a horizontal monitor these holes might actually be like here and here uh, when you look on it but they're they're gonna be around there somewhere you just kind of gotta kind of experiment uh, to find the holes like right here you could use these two holes right here uh, probably these two right here I mean you, you just look around uh, gap it the way you want, screw them in, but uh, I'm babbling here. Let me cut this scene, get this mounted in, and I'm going to show you what this looks like. Okay, so the converter board is now mounted in there properly. Now, if we back it up a bit, you can take a look at this. You can see it's nice and square in there. We've got our PCB feet on the back there, and here's that gap that I was talking about. Uh, with my finger on both sides so we know there's nothing touching right here you don't want this thing touching the metal on there uh, that actually might short it out and also you want to make sure that your ground wire is connected right into there uh, this is a proper placement on that control deck this is the way it should look <clears throat> now as for this jack right here, this is a standard uh, four pin JST right here. Here's the connector for it. 
it's a little wire there that leads out with four extra wires you can get these off of amazon uh, i believe they're 7.99 for what is it like 20 of them or something like that uh, otherwise if you're too cheap because this video is for cheap people and you want one for free uh just get a hold of me and send me a sazy you know self-addressed stamped envelope and uh, I'll send you one. Obviously, I've got a ton of these to spare, and what the hell am I going to do with them? So, uh, yeah, this, this is just an easy way to get sound out of this converter board without having to buy a separate amplifier. Uh, because chances are you're probably not going to need all the power that an amplifier puts out. Uh, I mean, you can if you want to, if the sound sounds too weak for you, but uh, for me personally, I think the sound that this puts out is just fine. Now, some people think that this here is an output and they could just plug their stuff into there. Well, you can, but it's kind of a low level and the amount of sound that comes out probably isn't gonna be very loud at all. Uh, what you have right here is one's an input, one's an output. In case, uh, <coughs> excuse me, clear my throat. What I would use something like this for is like maybe hooking up a subwoofer or something and then just run your sound off of this. And it's just really simply, you take this four pin JST here and it plugs in there. Now, if you look on this one, let me unwrap this from up here. Uh, you'll see it's together right there. What I did was actually got four more wires of the same color that were, you know, a lot longer that I could lead up and solder onto these ones and you just match up the color. I believe it's the inner two, I believe are the ground and the outer wires are the positive i think i'm not gonna look at that right off hand but uh it's it's pretty simple it's four wires two speakers figure it out come on it's not that hard people but it's an easy way to get sound uh, like i said you don't have to spend the money on the amplifier now you're wondering well, where's the sound come from do i have to use like you know a audio jack or something in there and if if you're using like vga uh yeah sure you, you definitely want to plug it into the input on there but if it's something like hdmi and sometimes dvi it depends depends on the dvi version that you have uh those will both send sound hdmi for sure dvi it, it depends you might end up having to use an audio jack out of your uh, raspberry pi or pc whichever you're choosing to put into your arcade one up but uh for the most part your audio is going to come from your hdmi so you don't need to worry about running a separate jack just one cable that's all there is and that's what i'm going to show you today is one cable so, uh, like I said, you wire that up to your speakers, plug that in there, and we will do that real fast. I can do this one-handed, maybe. I can never do anything one-handed. Sucks getting old. But, here we go. Use my right hand, I can do it. So, yeah, I got this plugged in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my little uh, thingies like this and uh screw these wires off to the side there so they're out of the way and tuck them back so this looks a little bit cleaner but yeah that's what we got all right so uh let's move on to the next scene and we'll talk about this more after i got this all cleaned up So here we have our Arcade 1UP power supply, and of course on the end of that is this 2.5mm barrel, and that you can of course plug into the converter, which is what most people will tell you to use, or get a different power supply or whatever. And then here's our Raspberry Pi, of course, which also needs to be plugged in. Now, typically... People will tell you, like, oh, you know, when you ask, like, well, how am I going to plug all this stuff in? They'll tell you to get, like, you know, one of these that's got, you know, multiple jacks. That way you could run, you know, multiple little power packs and what have you to run that. I, myself, personally, I think that's too sloppy and, in a, in a way, it's too confusing. So I want to kind of simplify that a little bit, and I want to be able to use just this one power supply to control everything in here everything now the conundrum here is that well this raspberry pi takes five volts this puts out 12 volts 
and this also runs on 12 volt. So how are we going to get the 5 volt there? Well, that that's pretty simple. Let me let me get this off to the side here and scoot this back and let me show you a couple different things that we can use here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is called a buck converter. Uh, what this does is this actually I have it upside down. Uh, what this does is it converts 12 volt to a range of voltage anywhere from I believe 3 volt up to 12 volt and it has a little dial there right here. I don't know if we can get that on camera right there that you turn to adjust the voltage which you can see on this little meter there. Now this this is probably a little complicated but it is a cheap solution. Uh, for most people, if, if, if you want something in a hefty size, they actually sell them really big too. I got one up on my shelf. I'm not going to grab that right at the moment. But uh, this is a buck converter, and that's what that can do is step down from 12 volt to 5 volt. Now, my preferred solution, and it's the easiest solution, is one of these. This is a DC to DC converter, and if you can read it on here, I don't know if that light's glaring or not, but... Uh, on one side, the input is either 12 volt or 24 volt, and the output is 5 volt, 10 amp. So what this does is this will take our 12 volt and convert it to a 5 volt signal that we need for our Raspberry Pi. Now the way we do that is with a couple of these. Uh, you can get these off of Amazon. Let me see if I can stretch this out here so you can see the whole thing. Uh, it's just a little extender on one end. It's got, you know, the little wire sticking out. And on the other end, it's either got the uh, male end or the female end. Here we go. And what you're going to do is this end here with this little thingy is actually going to come out from the 5 volt side. And this end right here is going to be the end that plugs into the power supply, and it's going to get plugged into right there. Now, another thing we're going to address, and we're going to do this kind of slow here. We're going to show you this first before we get to the other one. Another thing we're going to address is some people ask, like, well, uh, you know, that's great and all, but, you know, I need to turn it on. I need to flip it off. And, you know, how do I do that? And how we're going to do that is with a little button like this. This is a little 16 millimeter button that you can mount uh, anywhere you want. I'm actually going to mount this one up front on the control panel, and we're actually going to do a different control panel here in a bit. But uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is just a, a little on-off switch. It, it's a, a latching type where you press it in, it stays down, and it is on. You let go of it, it releases, and the power is off. Now, we'll need to wire this up, too. And where that's going to get wired up is actually right here on the 12 volt side, not the 5 volt. Uh, the reason we're doing that is so that it turns off the uh, DC to DC converter and everything else that we're powering with it. Now, as for the monitor turning off, actually, once this uh, powers down, your monitor will actually go into a sleep state. So we don't need to worry about turning this on and off. This will be handled by the Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these and I'm going to hook this up into here and then we're going to go over hooking up this button. Uh, then once we get the button hooked up and running and I show you how that works and I show you how the Pi powers on, then we're going to go back to the control panel. Uh, now, I might save that for a part four. Maybe I might do it in this video. I guess I got to see how much time this one's going to run because I don't want you, you know, watching this for like an hour straight from watching me do something. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this hooked up the way I want it to be hooked up. And I'm going to actually put a little bit of an extended wire on here. And that's just to uh, go to this button here. But I'll show you how that works in just a second. Okay. So I got the DC to DC converter mounted in right here, and I do have it wired up. Now what I'm using, now here's the Raspberry Pi, or the uh, Arcade One Up power supply, and it's plugged into this splitter right here that you can see. Uh, on one end of the splitter, it goes up into the converter board. The other end of the splitter is sending a 12 volt signal to the DC to DC converter, which is converting it to a five volt, which leads out here 
into our Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, that's lit up. You can see the light on the converter board is lit up. And if we swing around here to the front, uh, we can see our screen is now displaying the arcade. And, of course, our joystick controls are all lit up. So everything so far is being ran just by uh, one power supply. That's it. So when we're done with this, we can, you know, of course, mount this little thingy here in the back the way it's supposed to and just plug this little power supply into its regular connection there. And that's going to power everything. So... Uh, now, what we have to do is we have to hook up the power button. Now, the power button, um, actually, I, I, what I have is temporarily hooked up there. I just unhooked it, and then you can just see that power off. And uh, you can see that's going, and pretty soon that's going to change when this goes into sleep mode here. There it goes. It just went red. You can see that. Let me turn off my light here. Uh, this light just went red. But basically... Um, a power button is a power button and uh, let me get these wires here again and basically all an on off switch is is just you know two wires touching each other here's one wire here's one wire we put these together there it is it powers on the raspberry pi and in just a minute here we'll see this there we go it kicked on the monitor and so now it is booting up again on off on off pretty easy so uh, like I said, uh, we're going to actually redo this control panel so that we can incorporate that button on the uh, front of it there. Now, in parts one and two, I just showed you like the basics of making a new control panel out of your old one. If you have the, like, I used the Pac-Man there as an example. Uh, I actually think we're going to end this video here and we're going to do a part four and we're going to do a little intermediate building and we're going to redo our control panel to not only add the power button to it, but to add a little bit more functionality. Uh, so, so, so far, hopefully you, what you've learned is how to power in, in this episode anyways, is how to power the Raspberry Pi and the screen, both with the same power supply. So I will see you guys in part four and I don't know when I'm going to get to that. Hopefully this weekend I've been busy with work. That's why I've kind of been dinking around getting this one done, but we are progressing here, and this Ms. Pac-Man cabinet is uh, soon going to be finished. We're actually kind of in the final stretches here. But uh, once we do the control panel, I guess we'll be kind of starting over again with that in the front. But no big deal. We're going to make it look a little prettier than the uh, first one that I showed you in parts one and two. So I will talk to you guys later, and I will see you for part four. Bye.